Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome back. So today, I first of all, before I show you the um, another language arts curriculum, I'm gonna show you another sample lesson from there. What I wanna show you is something I learned when I was doing my Montessori training. So I'm gonna show you here. So this is an activity that a parent and child can, or parent, really whoever. So first one, I'll be the parent with this and this will be the child with the pencil, okay? So the parent's the pen. Ooh, just draw a line and then the child continues and I'll show you an example as to how my son does it and then wherever they leave off you have to like hunt down where it is hmm I almost can't see it I would say and then actually I really don't know where it is um <laughs> we'll say down here and then I would continue the path and then they continue it and then you continue it. So it's something you can do at the library. I mean, you could do it, I was gonna say the library, but I meant the restaurant, doctor's office, kitchen table, living room floor, whatever. And it's just, it's creating that, like having an activity you can do with your child, you're bonding. Now, one of the big things, this is just a side note, the unsolicited advice time is, especially if you have a child that misbehaves, is 20 minutes every day do something with each child that they want to do that they want to do now beyond that because you're creating a lifelong relationship i this is what i say is when they come to me later and say oh i want to do this and do again their favorite activity that we do say every morning um now each child right because they each have to have your own time of 20 minutes i would say you know, I don't really feel like playing that right now, but would you like to read a book or do you wanna play a board game? I would choose activities that we both like, that we both enjoy because you're creating a lifelong relationship, right? So that involves honesty and blah, 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 whatever. You get it. So that's just advice you didn't ask for, time. Okay, let me show you a couple other activities that are super sweet that you could do. Okay, so this is you create a grid. Um, you could do it like 10 and 10 and 10, 10 by 10. I just put in little dots. So what it is, is again, we'll pretend I am one person. So I do a line, little Tommy does a line. Um, say I do another line, you could do lines wherever. Okay, so then Tommy goes, <laughs> and then, oh, I go and I get to close it in. So I do an M for mom. So you're basically closing them in and whoever closes in the most boxes wins. So kind of cool. Another thing, pretend this is a brand new paper is I would make categories, make categories, and then just choose any category, any topic you want. Food, sports, pets. And then as a team, kind of be like, okay, can you think of a food? All right, and then you guys think of all the foods you possibly get. So you could do sweet foods, you could do, you know, salty foods, whatever, cat, fish. And so you guys come up together to come up with how many pets you can or vehicles or whatever it is your topic so it's kind of cool kind of cool okay so now i've showed you that why don't i show you some products that i didn't create or well i didn't create those but let me show you some products okay so first up uh first up let's do this so this is gritty logic the logic worker for kids now the more i go through it the more i honestly six year like no way do i think this is for a six year like there might be one exercise in like this one which shadow is correct we've done but beyond that, but like, it, it just gets progressively harder very quickly, I've noticed. So those are good, but then all of a sudden you're like, okay, match the, the side view with the top view. This would be honestly a challenge for me as well. And um, so I don't know how a six-year-old will do it, but hey, I'll let you know when we get there. Um, match the figure on the left with the blocks used to make it on the right. So that's kind of interesting. That's the one I had sectioned off to do today. We just didn't get to it. But then see each of these knots is different. Count the number of ropes in each knot. So they're getting, how many hay bales are there? So it's really weird how, like, so one, two, three, right? But isn't there a fourth one behind there? Isn't there a fourth one holding that up? So a little complex. Which way is the gear spin? Circle the correct answer, clockwise, counterclockwise. And then this is match like one of those. Okay, match group one with group two. So there, I had to do, I had done this one before, before I filmed the last video on this book. So I know the answer. And fun with lines. Can you figure out how to connect all nine dots with four straight lines without lifting your pencil or retracing? So some of them, like I said, they get a little harder as you 
as you go, as you go. So I'm going to wait. I, you know, I took this out and I think I'm going to put it away just for, I'm going to use it with my youngest and I want to stay another two years maybe. All right, next activity I got. So this is called, this is by Ginker, if you can say that correctly. It is the super slider. Let me show you the super slider. All right, so I'm on level 39. I'm going to show you how to play this. This is pretty sweet. I wanted activities that I could do without. So now. It's telling you how to set up the puzzle. The goal is to get this to here. So you gotta put all these little yellow ones in and then, okay, anyway, when the puzzle's all set up, except for two there, right? The puzzle's all set up. And then you hit the start button. You just push that button again, and then you move. You have to just move everything along until eventually you get this to here and then bam, you've won. Okay? So that's kind of cool. I mean, I bought it for an airplane and I just think it's kind of fun. All right, last thing I'm gonna show you is something cool because every time I find something cool that I do, my kids, oh my gosh, share it with you. So this was discovering life cycle. So there was a couple activities for it. This is moving beyond the page, the six to eight that I am working on right now. And what's interesting is, so there's a couple different ones I'm going to show you. So we started off with this. There's like option one and then this is option two. So this is the discovering life cycles part because science, everything's mixed in to these books, right? I've showed you them a bunch of times, but this was just cool. It was like, write the name of the animal um, and then the number of the picture from one to three in the order they occur. So that's what we did with my youngest because we're talking about life cycles. But yeah, so it was just kind of cool. I thought it was kind of cool, so I share it. And he really likes it and he does not like school. And then the older one, I was like, okay, like what, um, you know, you can draw. So we do it without writing generally because we're just eating and so we're just talking about stuff but there was there was another activity in here that they thought was great that we did because all I do is I go through a book and then section it off and I'm like hey let's do this one hey let's do that one and then we'll either talk about it or um, we'll write about it so today I've showed you before we did rules and laws we kind of reviewed that today what's a rule and what's a law um, a rule is what you have in the house and a law applies to everybody and so what's a rule and what's a law and then we did on the next page there's also consequences natural consequences um, like you ate cookies and you didn't feel good or authoritative consequences which is like hey you stole something and uh, you got in trouble for it oh I wish I could find that activity it was pretty sweet I think it was pretty early on so another activity we did today too was we did this one where we were like, hey, you know, cause we're talking about community. This book's about community. Um, that's why when I showed you the science in this book, it was dealing with the communities that they have as well. Science have, I mean, <laughs> animals have communities. Okay, so write the name of each community worker. Now, again, we just do it our own, just like, hey, what job do you think? So we can knock out a bunch of this stuff. So these are services. We did this before good or service. We're getting close to the one. This is the one we did today, math in the market. So how many oranges are there in the baskets? And then we got who has more goods in their cart and how many goods are on the shelf and, and which goods would you like to purchase and stuff like that. Oh, and this one, if you need a box of, you need a box of crayons, a pair of scissors, a package of markers and a notebook paper, how many goods do you have in your shopping cart? So kind of cool, we did that today. Anyway, again, that is moving beyond the page and that is book. Book one, I've showed you tons of times regarding it. Okay, so let me show you this curriculum here. I'm gonna show you what I do instead, but I do like this curriculum. I bought all the years of it. So this is Learning Language Arts Through Literature. This is Common Sense Press. I like Common Sense Press, because I really think they are common sense. This is all the stuff that comes um, in this book. So it comes with all these little books here, right here, all these little books and stuff like that because it teaches it does vocab it teaches spelling it teaches reading it to, like it does everything all in one and in everything all in one is good if your child is going at the same rate for everything like if they need more help in handwriting like uh, an all-in-one language arts curriculum might not be for you um that's what i've noticed anyway that's just my personal opinion take it or leave it okay so let me show you in here i want to show you something very cool so this is so this is the book. There's a student manual and there is the teacher's manual. So I'm going to show you the teacher's manual. And I'm going to show you a lesson very early on in the book. So part two is going to have new skills taught, right? And it's going to have the letters decoding new words, um, new sight words are A and two, reading skills, handwriting, grammar, creative expression, research, higher order thinking skills. So it, I'm telling, it covers a lot. So lesson one in part two is going to be quite a few days. Okay, so let's go down. So we're gonna read Nat Rant. Now the thing is, is you're gonna read this to your student because when you look at the book, you're gonna be like, hey, 
It's not exactly in the order that I am used to these books being in. So you read this book, Nat Ran, Anne Ran, Nat Ran, Anne Ran, A Rat Ran to Anne, on and on and on. You're also learning grammar. You're going to learn about a period. Okay, so then by the time you get to the end of the book, that's where they go new words, Nat, Rat, Anne, Ran, and new sight words, two and A. So now, fine, great, I mean, you get a ton of books. They're, they're actually not bad quality. Like the Abeka books for the, the K5 and the K4 are paper, paper, paper thin. They are thinner than actual paper. They are the thinnest paper I've ever seen in my life. These are not, these are pretty good quality. And then after you read the, after you read this book to your child a few times, you're going to discuss, hey, when it pauses, let's do a clap, right? Because we're talking about the period. And then you're going to show your kid a period and what they look like. So on the side here, it's got the materials needed and things like that. So you're going to have, it comes with a ton of sight cards, vowel cards, blended cards, like dice. I mean, it, it comes with quite a few, quite a few things to say the least, like tons of stuff tons of books here. Here's some more books. So very cool in that way. And then you're going to go and you're going to cut out these things. You're going to put them on order. You're going to talk about the book beforehand. I believe you talk about it first and like, Hey, what happened in this book? Can you describe what happened in this book? Um, so all that, even before you get to reading it, right? So, so in some ways this program, it, it follows kind of the same concepts as all about reading. You have the cards that you're using, you're having sounds, you're blending the sounds, you're doing different activities and things like that. And one of the other things it wants you to do is on this particular day, this particular lesson is to do um, your letters as well. Um, now, what I like about this, a definite plus to this is that it comes with a ton of stories in here, a lot of stories. So you don't have to go out and buy any books. Now, I'm, I mean, that's not true because it comes with, it does discuss these books. So the farmer's hat, good night moon, but these are all good stories that you can get at the library. Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. I'm sure you guys have read some of these, the runaway bunny who hasn't read the runaway bunny. So, and read aloud book. And, and then it talks about questions you can ask when you read the stories to get students talking as well. So now the way this program works is it does colors, the blue book. And then I think actually I have no idea what books, it. the red book, the orange book, the yellow book. I have no idea, but oh, right here. So it goes all the way up to high school. So the gold books are high school. So it has, I mean, if you wanted to, this is a curriculum that could see you all the way through. Now, I prefer a little easier curriculum. It's not that, now understand though, that this encompasses everything you're gonna need, which is why I like it. Like the, the lessons are not very long, but you're covering everything you're going to need. Grammar, vocabulary, spelling starts. I want to say spelling starts. I think de later on in the books is where I believe spelling starts. Um, but you're also going to do like arrange the consonants card and the vowel cards in this order and then point to each card and say the sound. So I like that just like All About Reading, it spells it out. But obviously this is more in depth, right? Like All About Reading, just basically we're talking about reading, um, not literature. But this is also literature. This is a lot of stuff through there. So I really like that. Now, the only thing is, I'm not doing that, and I don't know that I'm going to do that, only because, like, if you look through, there's, it's kind of a lot of, I don't know, it's just, to me, it's just a little intensive. Like, it's not, but it is. Um, so, just, like, to sit down, and that, and going through these, I would have to read like part A, it's not very intuitive. Like I would have to read part A, then do part A, then read part B. Well, I'm with my student, if you will, student and do part B. So to me, it's just a little much. And I just found it a little easier because again, we read all the books, we do a bunch of grammar stuff. So we do a lot of stuff, but this would be all in one. However, this I found a lot easier. Here is easy grammar, grade one. Again, I'm not saying this is like totally comp, this is totally comprehensive. This is like, if you want to break it down, you do a page a day, capitalization, Mr. and Mrs. This is day 11. Capitalize Miss B, gives you an example. So then you got to rewrite that. Punctuation, the days of the weeks may be shortened. You just add a period. Sun, mun, twos. Okay, so, and then you just write that there. And then every lesson, so there's always a capitalization. There's always a punctuation. There's always a lesson. A word may have two letters. 
Okay, and then there's always copy work. So you're always writing. This does, this is getting you into cursive as well. So it does handwriting, but it's also like the beginning kind of flowing for cursive. I'm not teaching cursive, just personal preference. <laughs> like by the time we get cursive, we're gonna, I mean, you're gonna use the computer for a lot of stuff, I would think, but maybe I'll change my mind, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, you do copy work on this, okay? So then we do that. Then, so I've even stopped the all about, um, the all about writing, what is it? Uh, handwriting without tears, just because we do copy work here. You can either trace it or you can copy it. You have a choice in that book. And then reading, of course, I've showed you this a million times. This is what I use just because it's so simple. Once you know basic sounds, you don't have to be an expert at them. You just know basic sounds. Maybe you've done reading eggs or something. Then you come here and then this is, look at how this is. So let's open, I'll show you lesson number one. These are the sight words that are in here, the sight word cue cards. The reason these are so successful is because it uses mnemonic devices. Is, is that a snake or is it a worm? Now this is for children who may not find, who have trouble reading. But again, all about reading would be fine. This would be fine. I'm sure it's whatever you like. This is just what I like because I found it easy. Uh, excuse me, a verb is embarrassing and then my, right? So you got these words and then from from sounding it out, fat, pat, rat, sat. Once you got those down and you have memorized those, you can read a story. There's your story. Story number one, it's a little long, but it's not, but it is. Um, and there you go, you've read a story. So then I usually have them read it twice. And then when I'm on to the next one, then it's like, okay, then we're back to here. He and on, so we work on memorizing those, right? Which are, they're pretty easy to memorize because of the mnemonic devices. They are pretty easy to memorize. And then we go back to, all right, we're adding a new word. We're adding hat, he on hat. And then pre-reading, oh, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do, we remember these. A is my sat, rat, pat, pat. And then we're gonna read this story. I'm gonna read about Pat, who either, my guess is he's a fat rat, because it's a very common story. So this uses these, when I was reading them, they kind of use, I mean, it's kind of the same, like a rat ran to Anne. Nat ran to Ann. Ann ran to Nat. So kind of good. my problem with these stories in general, but I guess it's all learned to read is sometimes they're stupid. <laughs> sometimes they're stupid. This at least it's about a fat rat and then it's a fat cat who's not fat, but he's interesting. But then he sits on some things. But now we're on book two. Book two is not as interesting, I will say. But I guess it depends what you prefer. Both are good. No problem. So Pat and his hat. And again, back to the same system in here. And then you read those. So this is Craft Right Brain Readers. I have the whole system. I think you only need the Right Brain Readers, but it depends on your child. It has a full system. If your child has issues with a lot of stuff, handwriting, whatever, you can get the full system. But this is that. So again, total personal preference. I, I love this. Learning art through language arts through literature. Here, I'll give you a quick spin through this book because the teacher's manual, not that exciting. But here, you can look through. Oh no, that's the teacher's manual the student manual and you can see. So every student has to have their own student manual, it says. So there's always handwriting portion, portions. There's like, which comes first, right? Matching things you're doing higher level order thinking. Here is an Aesop's fable, I believe. No, that one's not, but I think they have some Aesop's fable in here. They just have good classic stories. Yeah. So it's very interesting. I think it's great. I think it's great. It is definitely like one of my favorite, favorite curriculums. I love it when curriculums, A, this is very thought out because you don't have to buy every darn book. Say, um, say what you want about this curriculum. The books, some of the books are not available at the library, which if you were doing the full curriculum and you weren't like me, that would probably be a little stressful. Um, but here, all these books are available at the library and you could probably buy them used too because they're, they're just such readily available classic books. I've noticed literature programs, they either use classic books or they use um, new books, if you will, new literature. So it just depends on what your, what your preference is. Yeah, so there you go. And uh, that's your video for today. So ooh, I hope it helped. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time. See you later. All right, all right, all right. Once more than that's it, then that'd be it.